we need to create a monthly sales rep sales report from this data set. But we want to be able to add data to the bottom of the data set and have our report instantly update. Now, formulas are the only way to do this. And back in Excel Magic Tricks 1707, we saw how to do this. But with the new functions HStack, VStack, and Choose Columns, the single cell formula we're going to create is much easier. Now the approach we're going to take for creating this single cell formula is we're first going to create this block of conditions or criteria for adding to get the sales amount. That means we need sales rep and end of the month. So we'll create that block. Then we'll calculate total sales. We'll join those columns together horizontally. And then vertically, we'll say headers inside of the report and total row. All right, so in the top cell, we're going to have many formula elements that are repeated. So that's the perfect job for the let function, Alt Enter. And let will allow us to define variables and use them over and over. Now the first three formula elements that we need are date, person, and sales column. So for name, that's the name of the first variable. I'm going to say D. That will be the name of the date column, comma. The D name value, well, that's date column, comma. The second name for the second variable will be P for the person column, comma. P value will be person, comma. The third name, S for sales, comma. And we'll put in the sales column. Now, those three variables are defined, so I'm going to type a comma. Alt Enter to add a new line. And here, we're going to create a new name and a new variable input. But this line will be where we create this block. And we're going to build it one step at a time. Since this block is going to be the row header conditions for adding, I'm going to call it RH for row header, comma. Now the first thing we need to do is take the date column and convert all the dates to end of the month. So we're going to use the end of the month function. We'll use the variable D, that's the entire date column, comma. Zero means go to the end of this month, close parentheses. Now I want to see what RH delivers. So at the end, we'll type a comma. And this is where we're going to use calculation. Temporarily, I'm going to put row header. That means let is going to deliver row header. So when I close parentheses, and when I hit Enter, we're going to get an error. And the reason why is end of the month is one of the analysis tool pack functions that cannot do a function argument array operation. Every single one of these needs a little extra push to get it to do a function argument array operation. And since this is a number field, all we have to do is some math operation that won't change the value. Since dates are numbers, I'm going to choose the math operation double negative. Now, we could have done plus 0 or times 1. But on array calculations, double negative tends to be the fastest calculating. Now, when I hit Enter, now we get exactly what we want. Every single row in this date column has been converted to end of the month. In the top cell, F2. Now, we need to add the person column to the left of the end of the month column. Because here, the final result is going to be person and then end of the month. So in essence, we want to horizontally stack them up. And this is where we get to use one of the amazing new function, hstack. Now in array 1, that's where we're going to put the variable p. That's the entire person column, comma. And array 2, that's the converted date column. Very carefully at the end, I'm going to close on hstack. And we'll see what this delivers. That is beautiful. Now, let's go up here. And if we ask for a unique list of two columns, it will give us every combination possible of sales rep and end of the month. And that's what this block contains. So at the top, we hit F2. And now we use another amazing function, unique. We wrap it around HStack. And when I hit Enter, it's almost looking like what we want. Now we just need to sort by the person and then the date column. So in the top cell, we put sort 
on the outside of unique. And at the end, we type a comma, sort index in curly brackets. You say, I want to sort by the first column, comma, then the second column. And curly bracket, close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, every combination sorted. And in each row, the conditions and criteria for adding our sales. Now, not quite. This is the end of the month. We also need the begin of the month. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this existing column and use end of the month minus 1, which will give me the last day from the previous month. So in the top cell, now we're going to create a new variable. Now, before we get to the lower limit, Alt-Enter, we're actually going to have to extract this upper limit column and use it two times. I'm going to call this variable u for upper, comma. And what we need is the second column from the rh variable. So this is where we get to use another amazing function, choose columns. The array will be rh, comma. And the column we want to choose, number 2. Close parentheses. And let's look at u. We'll type u for the calculation, and let will deliver it. When I hit Enter, now we've extracted just that. Now we're going to have to use this in two places. That's why we created a variable, f2. Now, we're not going to create the lower limit as a variable. We're actually going to create it inside the sum ifs. But I'm going to Alt Enter. And I want to show you how we're going to create it, spill it. So as we're making our formula, we're checking each piece in the worksheet to see if it's working. Hey, we can just take end of the month of the entire upper limit column. And we have to remember to double negative, comma. And for months, I want to go from the end of the current month to the end of the previous month. So I say, hey, go backwards, minus one months close parentheses, and this is sitting in the calculation part of let. So when we close parentheses, now we can see, sure enough, those are going to serve as our lower limit. Now, these dates will not be included. So in the criteria, we'll say all the dates over here have to be greater than the last day of the previous month. When we get to the upper limit, we'll say, hey, all the dates over here, whichever ones we want, have to be less than or equal to the upper limit. Now F2, I'm going to Alt-Enter and just keep that down there so it's not in our way. Now this is where we're going to try and create the sum ifs. That's this full column right here. So sum ifs, the sum range, that's the S variable, comma, the first criteria range, and we have three of them. We have date for the lower limit, date for the upper limit, and person for the sales rep. So the first criteria range will be date. That's the full date column, comma. And let's do the lower limit. We have to look over at the date column and say, how many of you are greater than whatever the lower limit is? Now I use the join symbol ampersand, and then I'm going to use the delete key. Right now, that entire thing, remember, we spilled that, so that was giving us all the lower dates. So when we attach this, it will spill all the dates with that comparative operator. That will force some ifs to deliver one answer for each row in this table. Now we're not done. So inside of some ifs, there's the criteria, comma. The second criteria range, well, we got to repeat the date column, comma. We have to have the comparative operator for the upper limit. We're looking at all these dates, and we're saying you have to be less than or equal to the upper limit. So we put that in double quotes, join it to our variable right there, u. Now when I type a comma, criteria range 3, that's the full person column, comma. Criteria 3, well, I need to pick from the first column from this block. So we use choose columns from the rh variable. The column will be 1. Now, notice we built the lower limit right here, and we built the with a formula element the person criteria right here. We built them inside our formula because we're not going to repeat it anywhere. Notice that the u was repeated two times. And really, that's the meaning of why we use the let function. That's why we defined it here. 
the Excel calculation engine then calculates it one time and reuses the values. But that whole sum ifs, that is now sitting in the calculation argument. So when we close parentheses, now let will deliver, when I hit Enter, a bunch of dates, but that's only number formatting. Control, Shift, Grave, Accent, or tilde to remove that date number formatting. And sure enough, those are all exactly the values we need for the last column in the inside of our report, so F2. Now let's see if we can create the inside of the report. We just need RH variable and the sum ifs we just created. And we stack them horizontally. So we use the amazing H stack. Array 1, row headers, comma. Array 2, all of that sum ifs. So we come to the end, and now let will deliver the inside part of our report. And there it is. Now we have two parts left, the header row and the total row, F2. Well, guess what? Those are joined vertically. So right in our formula, I'm going to put V stack tab. Now this is getting kind of long, so I'm going to Alt Enter and Alt Enter again. I'm still in Array 1, but here I could somehow either select the column headers I want up at the top or select them from here. But I'm going to type it out. I'm going to hard code these into the formula. And we do that with Array Syntax. The first column is going to be sales rep. And since it's text, we got to put it in double quotes. And we're going over a column. So in array syntax, that is a comma. Semicolon means go down a row. The second header will be end of the month in double quotes, comma. And then the final one will be just sales. All right, so that's sitting in array 1, comma. Now that whole thing is sitting in array 2. And now I can see a highlighted boop there. That last parentheses is for VStack, so comma. Now I can see in the screen tip the argument Array 3, Alt Enter. And here I'm going to create the grand total row. And I want show nothing, the word grand total or total, and then the sum of all sales. So we'll use HStack. Array 1 is just going to be double quotes, double quotes, because I don't want to show anything, comma. And then whatever you want here, I'm going to say grand total. That's array 2, comma, and then the sum function for array 3 on s. Now that's the sum function. I can see it's sitting in array 3. So now I'm going to close off h stack right there. h stack is stacking up three items horizontally for the final row in v stack. And that should do it. When I close parentheses on v stack, close parentheses on let, when I hit Enter, Adjust the column width. There's our single cell monthly sales by sales rep report. Now if I go down here, select some records, and I'm going to move them over here just to test. And sure enough, that is dynamic and beautiful. All right, so let to define some variables. A good end of the month trick, we used hstack, a new function. That's a new new school function. The old school new school functions are sort and unique. We use choose columns, v stack, and a bunch of other cool functions to create this single cell report. Now here's your bonus formula. I want to create a reusable function, and we can do that with lambda. And in lambda, we get to name the formula inputs for, in lambda, each one of the parameters. So we want a date column input, condition column input, sales column input, and then names for each one of the report columns. By putting these into Lambda, and then right here, this is going to be our calculation, but that's the let formula we just created. But now we replace each one of the inputs with the function argument name. So I'm going to paste date column, that's the input from the function that the person will use. We'll do the same for each one of the three columns. And now for the field names, we're going to come down to the first argument for vStack and use hStack. Very carefully, I'm going to put the function argument name, copy. 
That'll be the first field name in the report. So Control V, the date for whatever the sales column name is. Close parentheses, and I have to type a comma. So we added all of that, linked one, two, three inputs to the first arguments of what's going to be our new function. Then the last three arguments, we put them into HStack. Now we need to close off Lambda, and we're going to test it right here in the cells. And the way you do that is you put in all six arguments in the parentheses. So we'll put date, comma, person, comma, sales. And then the fourth argument is the label. And I'm just going to put end of month. That'll be at the top of the report for the month column, comma. Then the condition, I'm just going to click on person comma, and then sales. I'm going to click on sales. When I close parentheses, these six test parameters, when I hit Enter, the report is working. Now, F2, and very carefully, we have to copy everything except for the test amount at the end. I'm going to copy this, Escape. We need to take this and paste it into the Define Name dialog box. Control F3, new, the name for our new function. I'm going to call it something like month condition sales report. We can put notes. You can put whatever notes you want. And then very carefully down in refers to, I'm going to delete everything except for the equal sign and then Control V. Now when I click OK, click Close, I can try it over here, equals monthly, and there it is. And look at that. It even has this great screen tip. So date, person, sales. And then for text date column, I'm going to type end of month, comma, text condition. I'm just going to click person, sales. I'm going to click sales, close parentheses, and that is amazing. Now let's go try it on a different data set. There's our new function, date, and now product, sales, text label. I'll just put end of month, comma, condition, product. Sales report field name, sales. Close parentheses, and on a completely different data set, when I hit Enter, and I already pre-formatted this, there's our report. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.